All right, I'm sitting up here on the crossbow balcony overlooking the 60 yard backyard and I'm gonna shoot at 20. 4, 30, 45 and 60 is down there somewhere. So I got targets set out at those distances. Years ago, I did a sighting in your scope video for your crossbow. And a lot of people watched it, but they said it wasn't in depth enough, so they wanted more detail and they wanted me to talk more. So I did a series of videos on sighting your scope, like a four part series or something. And a lot of people like that. It's some of my most viewed videos, but a lot of people get on here and they say, well, you talk too much, you know, just show me how to sight in the scope. So you can't satisfy all of the people all the time. You can't make everybody happy, but I'm going to do my best in this video to do an updated version. Sighting in your crossbow speed scope, very easy to do. Bungie 3.0, the Scorpid Deathstalker 420. And I'm going to lean it out here like this and let you see what we got. Now this scope is new but it's not at the same time. This is the Excalibur Twilight DLX. It's an old scope, but a perfect example of a speed ring scope. And the concept is still the same with modern speed ring scopes. I took the Burris off of here because I'm running some tests. So that's the reason this is on here, but this scope was on here before and it worked very, very well when I first got this crossbow. You can see the speed rings got set to 380 because I was using heavier arrows such as these Death Stalker variety but they're a little bit heavier because I've got the 150 grain points on them. Overall, they're 442 grains, and we got plenty of death stalkers here, and we're using the right knock. That's really one of the tests that I'm running here is to make sure I can do accuracy at longer range distances. Make sure you get your scope installed properly. Did you put it on here right? Is it nice and tight? Is it not overly tightened? Don't overly tighten your scope rings, but make sure they're tight so that the scope tube doesn't move, right? The other thing you're gonna wanna make sure you do is tighten these down real good. Got to make sure they're on there good so it's not going to move because it's going to vibrate loose. You're going to want to check it from time to time, especially when you first put it on there. Make sure that your tube is and your reticles okay, inside are straight up and down. And you can do that. I did a video and I'll link to that video where you can use a doorway to sort of fudge that right, and make sure that they're straight up and down. And then you ratchet them down right. You do that and you're in good shape. Now we're going to start by taking off our turret caps. And I haven't done this in an awful long time, so I hope I don't screw this up. If I do, please jump in here in the comments and say, hey, Rich, you screwed this up. But, and there's, there are some little differences, right? One of the things I like about this scope is it only goes out to 60 yards. So it's got 10 or 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 yard reticles, which worked perfect when I bought this place, 60 yard backyard. 60 yard reticles on a scope what more do you want right that's perfection that is crossbow perfection the other thing that's different with a lot of more modern scopes one click on this is going to equal one half inch at 20 yards okay one half inch at 20 yards so we're going to stick our fingernail in there or use a penny and there it is that'll work our little penny we'll get that out here for use we're going to turn that with this now some of them have a little thing sticking up where you can turn it with your fingers all that good stuff this one does not have that so it's, you're going to read your manual, make sure you know how to operate your scope. Before we sight this in, a good idea to go through and make sure all of your measurements, right? 16 and a half inches. Boom, boom. Make sure that this, right, lines up with the factory settings, my timing marks. And I've done that. I've gone through and done that. And I've also done the cocked width, cocked the crossbow, make sure the cocked axle to axle is correct in the way that it was from the manufacturer. This thing is tuned perfectly. We want to make sure that's the case. Before we shoot this thing, before you sight it in with your new scope, go through and tighten everything up. Make sure everything's nice and tight so that you're not vibrating loose and that that is not going to hinder the level of accuracy that we deserve and expect. Make sure you got a good rest to shoot off of. I have a Caldwell Dead Shot Field Pod, which works for some crossbow stocks, not for others. This is a Field Pod style grip that works pretty well for the Scorpid Death Stalker. It's got that contoured front end there. It falls right in that grip this way. And it works pretty good if you do it this way, right? We're gonna make sure that our rest is level and we're gonna keep the crossbow level. If you need a little mini level, you can either glue one on here and look at it to make sure it's level, to make sure the crossbow is level, real good idea. One-Eyed Archer, uh, a friend of Bungie here, he was on some recent videos, and he has little bubble levels glued on all of his crossbows. You can't beat that. That way you've always got a level, right? This one doesn't have a built-in level in the scope, but it does have a level in the tripod to make sure that it's good. And I'll tell you that at 20 yards, it's not going to make much difference, right? Now, here's another difference with crossbows. This scope wants to be sighted in at 20 yards first. First and foremost, we go to 20 yards. 
that is our zero, right? So that's in the middle of the scope. Now, that works fine for this scope because it's a 60 yard reticle scope. It has 20 right in the middle and then 30, 40, 50, 60. And you got plenty of room below that zero before the, below that 20 yard line, so to speak, to have room for those other reticles. Faster crossbows now, our newer scopes shooting out to 100 yards, all that good stuff. Those scopes that give you reticles up to 100 or maybe even further, those you're going to have to zero at 40 or maybe even 50 yards. And the reason they do that is they're moving the 20 up, the 30 up, maybe even the 40 up. If they're making 50 the middle, that gives you more room below it. That's the reason they're doing that. Now, that's going to also, in my opinion, spell the the death of these styles of scope because you just can't see that many reticles. There's too many reticles, too much uh, on the screen going on, and you can't make sense of it, in my opinion. This is a knock that requires the cock vein down, so I always look at the arrows and make sure that it is, we snap these on. I'm using these knocks to see if some of my long distance accuracy problems. At 40 yards, I can kill a deer to 40 yards right now with this crossbow and it does fine. So I'm experimenting with this scope to see if the Burris that I had on here, the other scope I've done videos on, love those scopes, but seeing if that might be defective. Seeing what my crossbow accuracy problems are by process of elimination. I'm talking too much, aren't I? <laughs> but give me the background. So this one clicks on here. We want to make sure we're using the right knock because you're not going to get accuracy without an appropriate knock. We want to make sure that the arrows are appropriate and that they're all the same, approximately the same weight. Don't have different size field points, different weights. You want the same thing. We're sighting in with field points, not with broadheads. That's a whole different animal for some of them, right? And I'm pretty confident this one's dead on, but if you're not confident of that, it doesn't hurt to put the scope on here and aim at 10 yards and see what happens. Do you miss the target completely? Because you're going to miss it even further at 20. So it doesn't hurt to do that. Now, I'm real confident here that this is going to be close because I'm putting a scope on. It's going to need some adjustment probably at 20 yards. Not a problem. We'll do that. But we're going to then the 30 and beyond should probably fall into line on this scope with the 20 yard reticle being fixed. I expect because it's the same speed. It's probably shooting the same speed. Put a different arrow in there, it shoots a different speed, you gotta adjust the speed ring, but and, and you would have to adjust 20 as well. The other problem I got, this has the uh, cheek rest on here from Gotta Grip, did a video about that last year too, or the year before. But when I got that burris, this uh, you need to lift your head up farther. It's gonna be hard looking through here, but it brings up a very good point. When you're looking through the scope, make sure that you have perfect eye relief, right? You don't want to be looking through the scope, and if you've got a black ring around looking through the scope, then your eye is too far away or too close or something, right? If it's blurry, fix it. If you got to understand how to adjust the optics of it to make it clear and crisp and make sure that you have that perfect, full visual looking through the scope. You don't want that, you know, the black circle and the black sides or anything like that. So I'll attempt to do that on here, which I can do a little bit. I just got to put my the top of my cheek on here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a poke at 20 yards. Now I'm going to turn you around so you can look at that and watch the arrow fly. And you can, we'll find out together where that's going to go. Makes me a little nervous sitting on here, but we'll see what we can do. All right, there's my bulldog target on there, a gift from a friend of Bungie. Pick a dot on there, probably go with the middle one, right? Because we don't know what's going to happen here. So we'll try and stay there. Now we don't have lighted knocks because these are the knocks that came with the arrows. And I always recommend you get lighted knocks. Then you don't have to walk down there and find out what happened. We're going to ease that safety off. All right, get in the habit of doing that. All right, that is a little bit high and a little bit left. Actually, it's mostly a little bit high, I think. This is where it gets a little bit difficult for me, right? Uh, first of all, you got to know where you hit. And I know we hit a little bit high, so we're going to adjust it lower. I say that because it seems like every time I sight in a crossbow, I forget my left or my right at least one time during the process of sighting it in. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you what I mean. You see right here where it has left and right, where it tells you what you got to do. You have to be able to do that and turn it the right direction. That L with an arrow going this way means if you turn that clockwise, it is going to turn you right around here, right? Get it where you can see it, where you can read it. If you turn that in the direction of the arrow, it is going to pull your shot to the left. Here, same thing. If you 
turn this the correct way, you are going to pull your shot up if you turn it in the direction of the arrow. Here, the arrow is pointing clockwise. Here, the arrow points counterclockwise. So maybe that's why I always got screwed up. I'm going to blame it on them. I am going to blame Excalibur for me messing that up from time to time. Now, some of the scopes, you're going to have to look at them. It'll say like MOA, right, minute of adjustment. It gives you a much finer uh, adjustment, okay? And you can really micro dial that in, which is going to be especially important at farther distances. If you're shooting at 20 yards, I really like this scope, the simplicity of it, because right now that thing, you know, maybe I turn it in a half of an inch to the right and well, click down, I don't know, at 20 yards, whatever. Like, And then we see what it does with a couple of shots, and if we don't like it, we can adjust it. With those other ones, you got to really, really crank, 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 crank. And you're cranking that thing to get that half inch. It's not just one click. It might be 10 clicks, right, to get half an inch. It might be 20 clicks to get half an inch. You're going to have to read the instructions. But that's really all it's saying. Don't be too uh, fooled by that or concerned by that, right? Don't get nervous if that's the kind of scope it is. It's not a problem, right? Lots of scopes out there like that, they work fantastically. And all you do have to do is just have to turn in more clicks. But be listening for clicks. And I like it when they have the audible click. The older scope I had did not have the audible click. It had a, you could feel the click, right? I don't like that as much. I like to hear the click. That shot, again, right? We'll zoom in there. We'll take one more look at that. But that shot was a little bit high, maybe an inch high. So we're gonna adjust it back just one inch. This is how we're going to do it. If we turn it up in the direction of the arrow, the arrow will go higher. We don't want it to go higher, so we're just going to turn it in the opposite direction. And what I'm going to try and do is show you how to do it. Ready? And listen for a click. Did you hear that little click? If it was off screen, I'm sorry. But I turned it clockwise, right? Turned it to the right, and that should have brought it down one click. We'll do one more, okay? And I'll try and get it on screen. How's that? And you even heard the click, I bet. So that's good. And we'll give it one half click to the left, right? We want to pull that arrow. That was a little bit too far to the left. So you got to think about this, Rich. Um, in fact, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to adjust that yet. They're setting me up for failure is what they're doing, right? Um, because the arrow is a little bit to the left. And uh, that could have been me, right? And at 20 yards, it might not make much difference, but you got to get it dead on at 20 or it won't be, it'll be farther off at 30, even farther off at 40. And then it'll just be way off at 60, right? It's not that bad, but it does increase with distance. Anything that's off at 20 is a lot worse at 60, trust me. So all we're going to do, I'm going to leave that alone for now, shoot another arrow and see what the next arrow does. We'll get you lined up for that. Take another poke down here. Got the arrow in there, we got it all cocked. We are good to go. I'm going to take a shot top middle. We'll try that one. See how that works out for us. Ease that safety off. I got you on 60 frames per second so we can even slow it down and see where it hits. All right. We are definitely shooting left because that one is to the left, but I brought it down too far. Remember when I was talking about one click? Should have gone with one click, Rich. All right, here we are again. Remember I went up, no, I went down rather. I always screw this up, but I'm down too low now. So I want to put it back closer to where it was. And I will do that by simply going in here like this, right? And I'm going to go up one click. So that at 20 yards should raise that half an inch and hopefully put it right back toward the center of that dot. Now it's also shooting to the left still right we're gonna move it one click to the right same dealio we're gonna get down on here and look at that we got a left arrow if we turn it toward the arrow we're gonna be going to the left and we want to go to the right so we're gonna turn it one click counterclockwise away from the arrow the opposite direction of the arrow and we are gonna go and see if that puts us in the bullseye dead on bullseye right there those adjustments worked perfectly. So that's how you sight in your speed ring scope at 20. That's basically all you're doing, right? We're trying to get that on at 20. If you don't have 20 done, it's not gonna work. Some of those scopes want a 40 or 50, 
you got to center it in there. And there's instructions with those. Because, man, taking your first shot at 50 yards, I don't like that so much. That makes me a little nervous. Those crossbows are usually ones that shoot a little bit flatter. They're, they're pretty fast. They're, in a, they're past the 400 mark, right? And what you're going to do with those uh, crossbows is make sure they're on at 10 or 20 first. Eyeball it a little bit. Then get it on at 50 and then work from there. So let's take a poke at 30 and see what we can do now that we have 20 dead on. All right, I have snapped an arrow into place in B3 here in the slick black Cadillac. I'm going to ease that safety forward, put it on fire. And now we're going to use the 30-yard reticle. I like, you got this little chevron, a little triangle in there, that pyramid, whatever you want to call it. I like to use the tip of that, the top point of that, as my aiming point, because I'm very particular, right? It's not the little red dot that I get on a burst, but it's still pretty sweet. So we're going to take a poke at this target and see how we make out a 30. All right, we're a little low at 30, little low at 30. Now we're going to talk about the speed ring, okay? We're done with these, right? In fact, we can put the lids right back on this. I'm not going to yet, but we could. But now we're going to shift our attention to the speed ring. And this is set on 380, and some of you guys are saying, 380, good Lord, what is this, 2005? You know what I'm saying? Don't try and turn it into something it's not. If the crossbow is slower than its advertised speed, if it is slower than what you want it to be, which they almost always are, it seems like. But if that's the case, just accept that fact because accuracy on this thing, we're still back to garbage in, garbage out. Accuracy on a speed ring is what's going to give you accuracy in the field. If you pretend that this is, well, this is really a 400, so I'm going to turn it up to 400. No. I started at 380. That went a little low. That tells me that I've got to lift the barrel a little higher in order to hit the bullseye, right? Because it went a little low. That tells me 380. It's not 380. No. When is 380 not 380? When is a Death Stalker 420 not a Death Stalker 420? When you use a heavier field point, when you're using a heavier arrow, or, you know, just in real life, I guess is, is what that means. But um, that's a little crossbow humor for you. It's fine. You know, you accept that and move on. If I wanted 500 feet per second, I wouldn't be shooting this crossbow, right? And I'd, I'd love 500 feet per second. Don't get me wrong. So the 380, we're going to turn this down a little bit. Just like my right and left, I have to think about this before I say it. But correct me if I'm wrong, right? If I turn that speed ring up from 380 up to 400, it is going to zoom in toward the target. Zooming the scope in, I'll have a better view of the target. I'll be closer to the target. That is not a good thing unless you're shooting faster. Do you understand? Don't go sighting in your crossbow, get it all sighted in, and then you're out in the field and you want to take a close look at a deer, so you zoom in with your scope. You turn that ring, it is now not going to be accurate. Do you understand me? You have changed, probably not 20. 20 is fixed, because we did 20 with the knobs, with the turrets. But at 30, at 30 you screwed it up, right? So once this is set, I'm not going to touch it. Sometimes on the some of them might take a marker and put a little marker mark on there so I know it's always so I didn't bump it. But if I turn that speed up, it's going to zoom in. The reticles are going to appear closer together in appearance, right? In, in relationship to the background. It really doesn't, they don't move. They're, they're fixed. That's etched into the scope. And if they move, that's a problem with the scope. So, uh, And we want to be mindful that there can be problems with scopes, too. If you can't hold accuracy, that might be one of the problems. Again, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this. In our case, we're at 380. We're going to have to turn down a little bit. The crossbow scope thinks that this crossbow is shooting a little bit faster than it really is. I got to convince the scope by zooming out a little bit, by turning that speed ring down. If I do that, turn it down to a slower speed, I'm going to turn it this way to a slower speed. When I do that, it will make the reticles a little bit further apart. So in order to drop from 20 to 30, I have to lift the barrel up a little bit further. And by doing that, it will compensate for that lower shot. And we got our speed ring scope. Look at that right there. See, we're set just a touch over at 380. Um, I'm going to turn it like this. We'll just go down a notch. How's that? We'll go right down to whatever that notch is. That's probably too far. 350, 60, 70 is what that is. So we're at 370 now. Oh, man. If I have to shoot a crossbow that only shoots 370 feet per second, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. For those of you who um, aren't familiar with Death by Bungie, I've been shooting a crossbow that shoots, you know, on a good day, 305 feet per second. Downhill, you know, with the wind at my back. I've been doing that for going on 14 seasons now. So 370 is not going to kill me. Let's see how we make out, though. Ooh. That came out 
came up pretty good. For me to know exactly what's going on with it and what that shot did, I got to go down here because I don't have lighted knocks. But that has brought that shot up to where I think the elevation, I could see it through the scope better, but I think the elevation is now okay. That shot, windage, a little bit to the left, we're back to 20, maybe I play with and give it one click on the turrets again to move that to the right, uh, if that's a problem, but I'll shoot a few more arrows, maybe it's me, maybe it's not a problem. And you just continue to adjust the speed ring to adjust the elevation, that speed ring, once you're out to 30, 40, 50, whatever, the speed ring is done, or that's not gonna do a, a windage right windage is left to right elevation is up and down it's not going to adjust that windage with that speed ring so you're going to be stuck with just going back to 20 and adjusting the turrets okay but uh, you don't want to really want remember you make a half inch adjustment at 20 yards that's going to be different at 30 40 50 all that kind of stuff so keep that in mind i hope you got something out of this video I hope it helps you sight in your speed ring scope if you have other tips for people trying to sight in their speed ring scope for their crossbows leave the comments and suggestions and tips in the comment section right and that way we can help people be better crossbow hunters that's what death by bungee is all about and i'm going to keep playing with this bad boy but i hope you got something out of it until next time all hail bungee doesn't get much better than that Turns out we did bring it up a little bit, but it is a little bit left.